What's up deep divers? Welcome back to Studio Deep Dive. My name is Kyle and today we are going to build a turtle tank. Let's get at it. So for the keen-eyed, you will notice that I don't look the same as I did in the intro. And that's because this was actually filmed a year ago when we had adopted a turtle who was about eight years old and was living in a tank that was entirely too small for her size. After having her for a couple weeks, I decided that she needed a tank upgrade. And instead of just getting a larger aquarium, I decided to build an entire environment for her. I had never really done anything like this before, but I had seen plenty of people who did similar things on uh, Etsy and YouTube and thought, why not make something even a little bigger than that? So I set about making an enclosure that would roughly be four feet by eight feet at the surface with a 100 gallon tub in the middle for her to swim in. Being a red-eared slider, I wanted her to have both a water environment and a land environment to enjoy. I didn't really draw up too many plans. When I was making this, I knew roughly the size that I wanted it and then just had to adjust my framing relative to the drop-in tub that I was putting in, as well as the two different access doors I was planning on providing myself. Fits like a glove. You'll note that I had the tub sitting on top of two keg racks that you would normally find in the walk-in cooler of a restaurant or a bar. The reason that it was sitting on there was so that the weight was not being supported only by the top of the habitat, but rather largely sitting on top of the keg racks. The reason that I didn't have it sitting on the floor was because I had the four foot high walls on the sides and the tub just wasn't tall enough. I went about making some of the easier sides of the frame like the short side that would be at the back wall that didn't require any special cutouts. After I had completed that, I started making the sides and the front, which had to have some special cuts made not only for support, but also to allow room for things like the handle of the 100 gallon pond and other allowances for drainage and filtration. The first thing I did after completing the frame was flip it upside down and throw the base on top, which would soon become the bottom. As I watch this, I'm not exactly sure why I decided to put the furniture sliders on first and then fasten the base to the bottom, but had to do what I had to do. Chewy was very suspicious of my methods. I bought some furniture sliders on Amazon and adhered them with crazy glue and 25 pound weights. After gluing down all of the furniture sliders, I drilled and fastened the base to the bottom of the frame and flipped it back over so I could start working on the sides. Rather than measuring where my doors were gonna be and cutting them out, it seemed just as easy to clamp the sides to the frame and just draw the cutouts from the inside of the frame. Work smart, not hard. I found this to be much easier than measuring everything out and drawing a square. A lot easier just to fake put it on, draw it, and then cut it out. Once I had the sides and the top on, I needed to sand or at least abrade all of the side, all of the surfaces that were going to be treated with waterproofing material. After having sanded everything, 
I made sure to vacuum as best I could so that there wasn't any particulate that would be stuck in with the waterproofing. The base layer for my waterproofing was Pond Shield's non-toxic epoxy. It is a two-part epoxy that you also mix with some alcohol and comes out kind of like a white paste. This stuff is very sticky and it definitely permanently is on some of my clothing. Make sure to use more caution than I did when putting it on your projects. Thankfully, no Berkeley sweatshirts were harmed in the waterproofing of this habitat. After finishing a couple base layers of this white epoxy, I moved on to a rubber cement that I could paint on. And I would say I did about four layers of this. I wanted to be very sure that this was gonna be as waterproof as possible. Once everything was sealed in, I went about putting on a little addition to the side rails at the top of the enclosure that were going to allow me to then put on the holders for the plexiglass. I wanted them to all be removable, so I created slides for them to go in and out. Once I had everything set up, it was time to make it look good. It was time to paint. I put this base layer down because I knew that I was going to be putting some blue pine shiplap as the final finish and I wanted any of the holes in the shiplap or in the pine to have this peeking through them rather than naked plywood. I thought it would look a lot better and it did. Here you can see the two doors that I left myself and actually that aquarium down in the bottom was the original version of my filtration which ended up overflowing because it was gravity fed and the pump died that was returning the water back to the tank. So nearly all 100 gallons filled that tiny little 30 gallon tank and spilled out. Thank goodness I waterproofed the thing, otherwise it would have been way worse. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's deep dive. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button below and stay tuned for more videos and more deep dives. <laughs>